But now let's bring in our next guest. That's going to be George Tillis. He's Senior Markets Correspondent here. George, we're talking Workday. I kind of wanted to hit on this one a little bit, George, because it has not rebounded. We've seen uh, a little bit of a rebound in Salesforce today on the enterprise software side. Uh, you know, Adobe yeah. had a good report after giving weak guidance the previous quarter. But Workday can't seem to get out of its own way, and its stock's down 24% this year. Yeah, I mean, year to date, it's not been a good uh, performance. In fact, if you look at the last five years, uh, ironically enough, the company's stock price and uh, they don't pay dividends is relatively flat. So it really hasn't moved in the past five years. And in the last two quarters, we're seeing this sort of step down uh, effect occur. And I think there's a, a big difference when you look at the the guidance for a company like Work. I think I talked about this when we talked about Salesforce, by the way. Uh, when, we, when you look at the guidance that Workday provided versus Salesforce, but nonetheless, if you look at the uh, the report which came came out around the uh, the 23rd of the last month or, or May, uh, they did of course uh, beat the estimates for both earnings and sales. But a couple of things to note: their their total revenue was higher, and they beat by that's 18 percent higher. They, if you look at their subscription revenue, that was actually really good, uh, up 24 percent year over year. But their guidance for subscription revenues. Uh, came down to 17%, and even their backlog, which is still remarkable at 18%, what's happening here is is that the previous quarter, or the, the previous year for the same quarter, the backlog was higher by 20%. Now, they did guide lower for top-line sales. They offset some of that um, negative sales guidance for uh, with uh, shoring up their operating margin, but the kicker is, and I think this is why we haven't seen a recovery at all, is they didn't really provide guidance for adjusted earnings. So that tells me that one, or a couple things, one, enterprise uh, backlog is declining because of fewer commitments from large enterprise, because this essentially is a human resource capital management software company that majority of the Fortune 500 companies use. So it tells me there's fewer commitments as companies are paring back some expenses or uh, looking to, uh, to carve down or, or move down some expenses. But at the same time, to me, they didn't really have a visibility on, on, on expense management from a company standpoint. Now, what I mean by that is, I think what's happening here is, is they didn't provide an earnings guidance update because they're looking perhaps to cut some or organic expenses. It could be headcount. But if you look at Salesforce, the same thing happened. They actually guided lower for both sales, but they guided higher for earnings. And that tells us that, that Salesforce actually has a little bit more visibility on their expenses going forward versus Workday. So, therefore, I think it's stuck in the mud uh, because, again, you know, the guidance was revised lower, but there really wasn't an adjustment on earnings. Uh, if it had been higher, we may have seen a little bit of a rebound in the shares, but nonetheless, they're still trading lower. George, I mean, you covered a lot there. And is there anything yeah. unique about Workday, or is this as simple as – when your growth starts to decelerate, they, 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 they punish you. I mean, this dock was $311 in February, George. It's almost gone yeah. straight down. It has. And, and so I'm not saying it's going to be the case, but generally the case is you'll see a two-quarter step down. We're in the midst of that right now. The stock is trading right around its 100-week moving average. But uh, I think this is really indicative of what's happening from the standpoint of not necessarily its software, well, I don't necessarily see there's a lot of room for improvement of their software, but I don't see large corporations switching uh, because essentially they have a network effect. So their their growth organically is extremely important. Uh, their backlog growth is important. Their subscription revenue growth is important. As long as that number or the rate of change of subscription is greater than total revenue, that gives you an idea that they're optimizing or improving their operating margin, which they are, but they're just not providing uh, earnings guidance adjustments, which tells me that they don't necessarily know right now uh, what they're going to do to reduce uh, corporate expenses internally to their business to offset the, the the expenditure cuts from large enterprise customers, which is, again, uh, shown or indicative from the backlog decline by 200 basis points year over year. Yeah. Uh, real quick here, George, uh, before we let you go, yeah. is this stock expensive in the software enterprise uh, type of business? Uh, be, you know, because they're still, yeah. gr they're still growing. I understand the, the growth is slowing, but is that the reason because the valuation, the market had the valuation wrong to begin with? So it's getting, it's getting interesting. Let's put it that way, because if you look at the, the earnings growth estimates, now sales growth estimates have come down by about a percent for the next four quarters. Earnings growth estimates right now are still around 21%. Now, if you look at 
2025 is multiple at 30 times, it, it's basically trading at essentially, you know, one and a half times its earnings growth. So, you know, generally, if you're moving your earnings growth higher uh, versus down and your sales growth higher, you can get away with two to two and a half times uh, earnings growth in terms of your multiple. So it's below two times its, uh, its earnings growth in terms of its forward multiple, um, you know, one and a half. So one would consider that valuation looks like it's coming into equilibrium. But that's all contingent, right, upon the, the elements behind them, you know, demonstrating they're going to be cutting expenses. So I think this will be an interesting one to watch in the next maybe four to six weeks as the analysts start to digest the new earnings adjustments and they'll come out with some revised um, revised guidance uh, for their ratings on this on this particular name. This is what I think will happen. All right, great stuff. Great breakdown for us, George. Appreciate that. And George Tillis, Senior Markets okay. Correspondent.